How about now? You got sound? That should do it. Hang tight for a second. I think there's a little bit of lag time, but you should get some sound now. Awesome. Excellent, Jacob. I'm glad you can join us. And uh, if you're uh, signed in with Gmail, it gives us some different options because this software package runs through um, runs through Gmail or Google Hangouts. So let's see what I can do. I don't know what uh, what's happening here. Anyways, we're going to get started. And uh, I want to thank you anyways for being here, a Better Everyday Life Project, Volume 1. Um, my buddy and I talked about this kind of project one day when we were playing golf and we thought it might be a great idea because who doesn't want a better everyday life? And it's not that our lives aren't good enough as they are today anyways. It's more about how do we make them better so that we can enjoy our, our, our life even more. And uh, I know you and I come from the same kind of school, being uh, Tony guys, so we can talk about things and certainly with, with that language and, and what we've got going on that way. Um, I don't want to take a lot of your time, but I do want to thank you for being here and for s spending your time. Um, I hope I, you get some value out of what, what I'm going to talk about today. And, uh, you know, time's your most valuable asset, so I know how important it is. So I don't want to be too much more than maybe 30 minutes, you know, if we get going and somehow you and I can even connect and have a conversation through this platform would be great. Um, but in the meantime, you know, we talk about you know, my four Ps of, of, of living a fulfilled life. And I always think it's important because, you know, we have to have some sort of foundation. And one of the first and most important things we talk about is, um, you know, purpose. And what's our purpose in life? What is it that we're here for? And I think so many times we get so many different you know, beliefs, you know, our purpose is to achieve and, and accumulate things, but I really don't believe that that's true. And I ask a lot of people and, you know, I ask the question a lot, it's, you know, what are you here for? What is it that your life is about? Are you leaving a, a, some sort of a legacy? What kind of impact do you have on other people it is always something to consider as well, you know, and, and what it is that, that drives you. So many people get out of bed and just rush to work every day. And, and it freaks me out in the sense that I used to be one of those guys. And, and now I certainly, it's the last thing I want to do is get that kind of a you know, job or gig where you know, I just seem to be running in this, uh, you know, that, that mouse on the wheel. I don't, I don't want to be doing that. I want to be living my life and, and being totally enjoying it. Even if I'm doing things I may not particularly like at the time, but I know why I'm doing it, what my purpose is. And my biggest purpose, my biggest purpose really is about service. It's what I believe my life's about. And I believe everybody's life is about service and that we're here to serve. And, um, you know, how we serve is, is, is different. We serve in our job. We serve in our families. We serve in, in you know, our might be in our church if you go to a church. But how do you serve and how do you step up and show up and you know I know I've been guilty where one of my big aha moments last last summer I was in, in sitting in a ceremony up in Squamish British Columbia and, and I realized I need to serve myself as much as I serve others because I love to give so much and I like to help other people so much that I lose that part of myself and I realize hang on I'm not doing all the shit I need to do for myself and I forget to do that and I've taken some time now for the past few months to really focus on myself so that I can live my purpose to be an inspiration to others, live a life of growth and contribution and really enjoying life and sharing you know, some of the things that I've learned. So purpose is really about service. You know, some people can believe that or not, but, you know, I, I've been to so many different uh, spiritual studies and, um, you know, if you, I'm not going to quote you know, the Bible by any stretch because, um, you know, I'm not going to go down that road. But, you know, if you look at any kind of spirituality, there's all about service. It's service of God. It's service of others. Serve your parents. Serve your family. Serve your children. And even in your job and what you do, 
service is actually also an attitude you know customer service is an attitude people just sometimes people are so miserable in their jobs that you really see where it happens where they treat people you know badly and, and they just don't give great service because they couldn't care less one of my favorite questions I ask people, you know, you know, I could be at Safeway, show them, hey, how's your day going? Not bad. Oh, hey, not bad. We can make it better. Getting off work. You know, but then how can you make your work enjoyable? How can you take some of the toughest things that you do? And you're a fire teamer, so you understand embrace the suck now <laughs> anyway. It's right from Dallas. But it's it's exactly right. You could be doing something, but how do you do that in a spirit that at least, yes, I'm here to serve? So I think that that's a really um, important aspect when we look at our purpose and, and how we we show up but uh, you know living a life of purpose so you get up in the morning and you're excited you're not just going to work your work has a purpose you know even though it might be laying brick that you don't want to do and really labor intensive or it doesn't matter what it is if you don't like it you have the ability to change it and do what you want to do but maybe you're raising a family and, and that's the only job you can get while you're making some money, you gotta pay the bills, you gotta feed some mouths and and make ends meet. So you gotta do what you gotta do. So purpose is also about why we do what we do. And I like to talk a lot about the power of why. Um, we know what drives our human behavior, which gets us into um, you know the second P. Uh, one of the top things that drives our human behavior is uh, pleasure. We're, we're driven to really avoid pain and gain pleasure. You know, it's fear, reward, carrot and the stick. And you can live a life of purpose. You can be busy. You could be just working and, and never really enjoying what you're doing and, and the pleasure that, that's available to be out there. I was actually on a call yesterday and would imagine you remember Willard. But uh, we were talking about that and how uh, we need to reward ourselves. We work hard to do things and achieve and accomplish and, and you know create this better everyday lives for ourselves and those people around us. But we need to stop and reward ourselves and have pleasure, whether it's a, a massage, it's good food, it's it could be so many different things for people. It's sports, it's sex, it's relationships. A nap could be pleasure for some people. Um, pleasure is such a varied thing. So I, I think it's great that we can take what we do and be driven by pleasure and make sure we have something to look forward to because again it comes down so many people are on that treadmill especially in these urban jungles the concrete jungles they're just busy being busy and they forget you know sometimes to have fun because they're working all the time and the body needs the endorphins it needs everything that happens when you enjoy pleasure because that is medicine you know, anytime you can really enjoy yourself, have a lot of pleasure, and you release all different hormones and endorphins and such, your body heals, and it's really good for your body because they're positive, feel-good emotions, and you want your body to get as much of that as it can because, you know, that's my belief. I'm no doctor, of course, but that's the stuff that, you know, fights cancer and whatever it is that, that may be ailing you, and depression for sure. You live your life. You, you get pleasure in your life. You're not going to be depressed. And how many people do you, you – you found pleasure in just being present. Yeah, hey, man, I get it. I totally get it. And, and that's something that's been new for me. I'm pushing 49, and for a long time, I couldn't sit still. I, I wasn't present because I always was looking for the next shiny object. So I completely get that. You know, But there's so much pleasure in so many different things, right? And we have to make sure that we're living our life with something to look forward to. It could be travel. It could be a vacation. It could be a, you know, a day off where you get to go do something you love to do. And that could just be meditating. It could be going to the beach. It could be walking to your dog. It could be anything. But we have to take time and know and plan for that, especially in our busy lives. You know, coming from the community that we come from, Jacob, I'm sure you agree, you know, peak performance is great, but it can be highly overrated if you're living a stressed out life and you're treating people sh like shit because you're too busy being busy again, which again connects to being present, right? Um, but let's go back and talk about the, the third P because, you know, pleasure is just one of those things. Make sure you get it. That's the main thing. Make sure you have something you're looking forward to that's pleasurable and exciting and that rewards you for the hard work that you're doing. Because all work and no play makes Mark and Jacob and everybody else who's here a dull boy, right? We don't want that to be happened because we're pretty pretty charismatic characters. You know, we go back to passion. And 
you got to be excited about your life. So you can have pleasure. You've got your purpose. But how are you showing up? Are you just kind of, oh, my God, i got to do this. I'm, you know, you know, you know what passion's about. you got to be excited and have some pep in your step, a little excitement in your voice so that when you are out there doing what you're doing, it actually becomes contagious. Smiles are contagious. And if you take a look around, there's a lot of people who don't smile. They just don't. And I remember hearing about a study one time years ago, I think it was uh, University of Berkeley, California, they had done a study of depressed people and all they had them do, or actually it was a depressive, I think it was actually manic depressives if I remember correctly. But the treatment was to smile. It was to force themselves to smile. And that physical change in their body actually created a feel-good state. It, it made them, you know, happier. It, it took away that depression. And again, that's passion. You can't be passionate if you're depressed. How do you do that? Use your body. Mirror neurons. Yeah, I get it. Yeah, for sure. Um, but that's so important. And, and that passion. You know, I, I answer the phone at work, great morning, with passion. Another guy goes, oh, you know, and, and it's different. You could just tell the difference in the energy of the way people live their lives. Now, it doesn't mean that one person's necessarily happier than the other, but it's how that they show up and then how they kind of, kind of pass that passion on and creates a contagion. Because generally, happy people like happy people, unhappy people don't like happy people or people who are passionate because they wonder what, what the, what's up with that, right? And I think it's kind of funny. Um, but I, I enjoy living my life with passion because that's that's really what it's all about. And, and these are the foundations that apply to whatever it is that you do, whatever job, however you show up, because that comes down to really being present. And, and I think being present is probably the biggest key because when you're present, and you actually have that mindset of just being. We realize that so many things don't matter. You know, it's, I don't know, I find it quite interesting when um, people just are not tuned into what's going on around them. They're so busy being busy. And, you know, it's, I sit on a, I work at a golf course during the day and I, I love it because I love being, you know, I'm not in a concrete jungle. I get to go where it's green and beautiful. People are having fun. You know, they're they're my, sure they're they're having pleasure. A lot of them are passionate about the game. Purpose, however you want to apply that. I'm sure there's many ways you can fit that to people's golf game. But it's really funny when you come in and you see people, and they're going there to have a great time and to relax and and have fun. They show up stressed out. They're running into the parking lot because they're late, or you know, they're running under the tee box with their friends because they're behind, and it starts affecting their game. And some people never even take the time to enjoy the wildlife that we have out there. We have beautiful birds of hawks. We've got squirrels. We've got two eagles nesting on the tenth tee box, and parents. Every day you're seeing beautiful blue herons. It's it's just fantastic. I, I watched a coyote the other day. You know, this is presence. Middle of the day, coyotes stalking a flock of geese that's on a fairway. And we get to sit there and in, in our presence. And I can tell you that gave me a lot of pleasure to be present for that. And it was passionate because we all kind of watch, oh, man, what, what's going to happen here? But, you know, the, the birds took off and they were gone pretty fast. And, you know, hey, here's the thing. Wiley Coyote there, he was living his purpose because he was hungry and he was looking for food. And it's pretty simple in the wild, in the animal kingdom, what they're doing. And, you know, the birds were living their purpose because they were surviving. They were flying off. Uh, we were living our purpose by just having some fun and connecting with our friends and having a good game. But we were present for all of it. Because if you're not present on something like that, you're going to miss everything that happened there. And what attracted our attention to it was the geese started going crazy while they're just kind of mowing down the grass in the fairway. And we're going, what's going on? That's kind of unusual. Why are they making so much noise? And we started looking around and being aware of what was going on. And we could see um, through what we were doing um, 
right through, you know, fairway and into the back where this little coyote must have his little den. But yeah, he was out there stalking these geese and it was just one of those things where when you can be present in nature, there's something that is just so profound about it. And and that's one of the things that I love. You know, and you you're talking about finding pleasure just being present. I agree. I you know, when when people get home, when you get home, do you have to turn on a TV for distraction or music? Are you looking for something to do? Are you able to just sit in silence? Because this is one of the uh, real important factors that, you know, when we can silence our mind and, and settle into that inner peace, it's huge. And, and I've got a passion for, for inner peace because, you know, too many people take life too seriously. And there's one thing I don't believe anyone there. I, I don't. Where, where, who said life's serious, really? I think there's an Oscar Wilde quote about that. And you get too busy being busy, you get too serious being serious, and then people stop having fun. And then they wonder why they get sick, why they get tired, why they get discouraged. It's, it's just one of those things that I think is... Uh, we need to really be mindful of it because it's important and we don't do enough of it. You know, the guy who's too busy to meditate needs to meditate more than anyone else. If he doesn't have 15 minutes, he needs at least 30. If he doesn't have 30, he should take an hour. But you got to take some time to silence the mind. And, and it does take time because there's so much going on out there. And this is why presence can be very difficult because while you're sitting there doing whatever it is you're doing and you're thinking about other things, like right now I'm actually really present in what we're doing. I'm watching everything so I can be aware of what's happening around me, but I'm being present because I want to make sure that I give you, you know, the best of myself in this moment. And I thank you for, um, you know, sharing your time with me here as well. But yeah, being present is is just one of those really huge things where, you know, when you, I noticed you were talking about in your questionnaire about spirituality, and um, I noticed that in my, really my experience has been spirituality comes a lot with, with presence, because when you silence that chatter and you're able to just focus on, um, nothingness or really what we would call no thingness to just be there's a magic to that and you know you're saying you're finding pleasure in in in, in your presence and, and being in the moment for sure there's no question that that's huge and when you're in that place of silence in that place of presence you can allow certain thoughts to just kind of leave your mind because what I've found in my meditation practice um, and just being present within that, um, a lot of thoughts and a lot of feelings and a lot of emotion that don't serve me anymore just fall to the side. But it's about acknowledging a thought as it comes through your head and letting it go. Acknowledge it and let it go. It's about not hanging on to it. And so many people, I remember one time I was in a, in a pub with, with a buddy of mine and you know, I was recently single and I was talking to the gal next to me and we were having a good old time. It was Friday evening, having a couple of beers and this was a number of years ago. And uh, I found it really interesting because you know, the coach of me comes out all of a sudden when this woman was so angry towards men because of her experience three years ago and her divorce and she was living in it. She was angry. She was carrying it in her body. So she wasn't letting it go. So not even in the silence could she let it go. She's carrying it out into her world and she's giving it to other people. And this is old stuff. The presence, the now, the moment was really having a good laugh, having a chuckle and, uh, you know, enjoying our Friday evening amongst friends. But it was just interesting to see how present uh, this woman wasn't because she wasn't living in the moment. And living in the moment is huge. Um, whether you're at work, whether you're, you know, you could be anywhere driving. You need to be present when you're driving because that's when accidents happen. And uh, I think that's a, certainly a good example. 
but I found that, you know, especially, you know, as a man, and, you know, we're both men here, presence is super huge for women because they love it. There's nothing more attractive to a woman when a man is actually present and is there and is really um, listening to what they're saying and cares. There's an energetic feeling that comes around with that, and there's a, an ability for, um, you know, true connection to happen because, you know, if a guy's just thinking about, does she like me? Am I going to get a kiss? Am I going to get more than that? You know, first, second, third base, am I going to get home? If they're thinking about all these things and they're thinking about all their strategies that to that while they're having a conversation with a beautiful woman, there is a connection that doesn't happen because they're not present. Number one thing we got to do, we got to listen. And we got to be present, and we got to hear what's being said. I know I, I did a video a while ago, and I tell a story about um, one of my ladies at one time. And she says, "You're not listening." I says, "Yeah, I am. Yeah, I am." And I was kind of defending myself. She says, "Oh yeah, what? What did I say?" And I was able to repeat it back to her. I think pretty much word for word, and it was something about toothpaste, if I'm not mistaken. And she kind of gave me a smack and laughed and said, oh, my God, kind of, you were listening. It's like, well, I heard it, but was I listening? I, I you know, it was kind of in one ear and out the other because I wasn't present. I was in, completely engaged in something else. So presence is, is really, um, you know, a huge thing because in when you live in the present moment and when you are there, I believe that's when, you know, there's no worry. There's no fear. There's just this element of being where, sure, we have to make decisions. We have to, maybe we have to act, maybe we have to react, maybe we have to do something because any situation can be different. But presence is where um, our great decisions happen. And if we're going to be in fear, if we're going to be panicking, if we're going to be in stress and anxiety, we're not going to make the best decisions and there could be dire consequences. You know, I always think about a fighter pilot, you know, they're flying at Mach 2, they're cruising around, they, they're, you know, a rocket ship waiting to explode or a missile ready to go. And, you know, these guys got to be present. They're flying around. They're in the moment. I'm, I'm sure they're not thinking about what's going on necessarily at home or, you know, at the hockey game or, you know, who did what the other night. They're busy flying that machine, and they've got to be present. They've got to be dialed in. If you're driving, you know, you're living in fear, that's not going to help you. Something goes on. You've got to be present. You've got to be in the moment because you have to react, and you have to maybe save your own life and the lives of others. You know, that can certainly happen. Presence is, is certainly, certainly a, a very powerful thing. You know, it carries us, like I said earlier, a spiritual component because that's when you can actually hear your spirit. That's when you can actually connect to it is when you're present. When you're not present, you're just engaged with, with your body, your mind, and your spirit. So um, I think that's a big part of it. So hopefully I've given you a few things to think about anyways. You know, purpose, passion, pleasure, presence. One thing about pleasure I wanted to talk on is too, there's, uh, you know, there's a few different kinds of pleasure. You've got physical pleasure. You've got emotional pleasure. You've got spiritual pleasure. Those are a few different things. Um, do you have any questions for me at all? The best way to get present. I think part of it is practice and really becoming aware when you aren't present because it's a conscious awareness thing. Um, you, you can't change what you don't acknowledge. And if you can recognize that you're not actually in the moment, that's part of being present because your consciousness is saying, oh, hey, holy shit, I wasn't listening. I wasn't there. You know, um, breathing, breath, slowing down your breath, slowing everything down is another great way um, to be present. One of the top things I learned as well, and, and this was a Tony thing, it changed my life completely, man, was uh, his living health principles about breath. And through my yoga practice and everything else, it's about slowing our breath down because most people breathe short and shallow from the top of their chest. 
And that's one of the things that creates or, or it participates in creating stress and anxiety because we're not getting enough oxygen to our body. We're not oxygen, oxygenating it. The yogic breath is about that slow, deep, long breath through your diaphragm. And then it, you, know, you breathe in that way and then you fill up your chest. And in the same way, when you exhale, it exhales from here and then down to your, down, down to your abdomen. And then when that happens, you're getting a much better, much more full breath and more oxygen. Oxygen is the most important part, you know, fuel of, of life because that's the first thing. Three minutes without that, maybe five if you're lucky, you're, you're done. So um, breathing is, is a really important way uh, to get present. You slow that down because if we get into fear, we get into that... Um, uh, innate fight flight reaction that's kind of in us that law of the jungle fear that's going to raise your heartbeat it's going to raise a whole bunch of different things and you're going to start being there and again that's state management because if you can slow down your breath through that you've got a different ability to manage your state um, and most people what will happen is they'll start freaking out and that's where stress and anxiety and panic happens so many swimmers drown because they panic not because they can't swim, not because they can't get safety, because they panic. Something will grab them underwater, whatever it might be. They'll take in a couple of gulps, and they panic. So, you know, one of the best ways is don't panic. <laughs> but, um, you know, it's, it's important, that breath, that, that ability to be there. And, again, it's practice. Meditation different practices within meditation and uh, bringing yourself back to what you're doing if you're driving down the road and you're thinking about you know whatever it is you're thinking about recognize it's like oh look the license plate in front of me now I'm being present I'm reading that hey look at that red car beside me look at look at what's behind me because sometimes you people you ask them who's around what's going on they don't know because they're not fully paying attention but being present gives you that ability, and it's practice, uh, and being aware that there is even such a thing, because some people aren't even aware of that. They're so unawake in this world that they're not even aware of what being present is all about. Anything else? I want to see if I can get, do you have a video camera, Jacob? I wonder if there's a way I can see you. Did anything change here? I'm just kind of curious. I'm taking a look at a couple of my buttons here and seeing what's going on. Requests, view, Jacob, what do we got here? Oh. Sorry, Jacob, I don't know what happened there, but I saw a request, but I don't know what uh, what that allowed us to do. Just seeing how... Hey, there you are. Jacob, present, hide, eject. Present to everyone. Hey, buddy. Can you hear me? I can't hear you. How can I do this? So you still there's... Oh, hey, man. Yeah, no sound. Oh, let's see. I don't know what's what uh, what the option is. Do you have a button there for your microphone mute? Because it's just showing muted here on my side. But I've got your video here. Okay, well, I'm get, we'll have to figure that out. <laughs> Yeah, no, it doesn't, um, it's not giving me an option here. Hmm. 
Other than that, you were able to see and hear me okay, Jacob? Yeah? Okay. Awesome. Cool. Yeah, I just wanted to get out and um, start doing something. Two minutes just seemed to be short all the time. <laughs> right on. Yeah, I don't know why I can't get sound on you. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, did you have any other questions anyways, or you can send me something to, uh, oh, here we go. Thanks, buddy. I just read that. I, uh, I totally appreciate uh, that. And hey, I'm always here for you. And uh, I'm going to start doing these weekly, weekly Wednesdays at 7 o'clock, um, start putting some more structure to it and, you know, really put it together. But I, I'm... I thank you very much for joining me tonight anyways and uh, taking the time. Hey, no problem. My pleasure. And uh, I'll do, we'll talk some more about spirituality and meditation and things because it's huge. Um, you know, that Chakra Diana Tony did, that Date with Destiny. You remember that one? That that changed my life, man. You know, I, I've got a copy of it here. If you're interested in it, I can always forward you a copy. Um, but it's a, yeah. Yeah, so send me, um, do you use Dropbox, Dropbox and stuff? Dropbox? Okay, cool. I'll, um, I'll find a way to get that over to you, okay? Um, but it's a great meditation, and it's, it's one thing that whenever shit goes sideways for me, I go to that. And it's, you know, in 40 minutes, it's like, ah. <sighs> There, and I got a nice little 15 minute one too, but I like the recorded guided meditations because it helps me stay more present. Because that's the thing with meditation, right? The more I meditate, you know, you meditate and all of a sudden you start thinking about something else. And it's like, okay, uh, got it. And then you got to kind of discard it. And then you kind of get into that place, something else pops up again. And you have to get rid of it. But th this is the trick with meditation, and especially for us Westerners, right? We have so much going on. Yeah, Eckhart Tolle, the, um, you're reading the um, new what a purpose, right? The one about purpose? Awaken to your life's purpose. Is that the one? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Fantastic. I read, I've read that too. Yeah, he's got some great stuff. So, Right on. Well, hey, I'm going to let you get going, and I thank you very much, but if there – Okay. Oh, nice. Okay, I'll go check it out for sure. Right on, buddy. Uh, I'm going to go, once we log off, I'll go check it um, right away so I can see it. But I, other than that, it'll affect the bandwidth if I go now. But I'll go take a look. And, uh, yeah, anytime, if you ever need to chat, man, you can always give me a shout or, you know, set up a time, and I'm happy to be there for you. Are you going to San Jose? No? Okay. Yeah, I'll be there. Yeah, for sure. I didn't catch that. Fire team. Yeah. <laughs> Three? No. I, I'm not sure. Three? D? Three D? Okay. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> type it. Type it. Because now I want to know. Ah, nice. Yeah. No, I won't be there. I'd love to be. Um, but I don't think. Yeah. Nice, Florida. Yeah, we've got rain. It's like fall here. Winter's starting. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, if, uh, if I get my paperwork to get back across the border after November 30th, um, I. Like to get to date with Destiny, but I gotta wait to get that stuff done, which will probably happen in January, February. So, but, cool. Just want to hear from everybody. No problem, Jacob. We'll see you next week. All right, buddy. You too. See you later.